Today, she is silent. Your stomach growls as you sit down on your sofa. Finally, the rumbling grows louder. You decide to put on your coat, grab some shoes, and head out to the corner store to buy some ramen. You get hit with a cold whiff of winter weather as you open the door. Then, with a ray of white blinding you for a second, you mince your step and entirely impress against the slippery ice just at your door. Spinning violently, you grab for the nearest thing, the railing. But unfortunately, the momentum was too strong, and you hit your head onto the stairs. The world went black. Whoa, hey there. You're finally awake. D don't move so much. You were out there for some time alone on the ground when I got home. I'm not sure what or how, but something told me to return home quickly today. Do me a favor, honey. Move your fingers. Don't rush it. Just one by one and squeeze my hand. Your grip isn't firm yet. You're still shaking and ice cold. I made you some soup. Here you go. You sit there stunned as the girl next door feeds you soup. With some feeling returning to you, you feel the heavy wet bandages around your body. You ask her how did she get you upstairs in such conditions. I was the president of the judo club for four years, so I can essentially deadlift just about anyone now. Your fridge was empty, so I brought some extra groceries I had left. I hope you don't mind. I used to be a nurse before moving to this town, so I treated you as best as I could until the roads cleared, and it's just you and me. You express your gratitude and ask her, why she stopped playing her violin? She gets quiet. Oh, <laughs> that. Don't worry about that annoyance. I'm not good at it anyway. My parents used to play, and I thought maybe. <sighs> it's not necessary anymore. Give me your bowl. <laughs> I will wash it. She grabs the bowl and heads for the sink. Your eyes grow heavy, and you soon fall asleep. As you wake up, you see the girl is looking around your room. Your embarrassment seems to be noticed. Oh, uh, sorry. I just got curious. I've never been inside, well, a boy's room. Well, I, a man's. I should say, I guess. You ask her what she's been doing since you slept. A bit of reading. I see you really like music. Is that why you asked me about my violin? I see. I'm sure. I was annoying. I'm sorry. You interject, stating your feelings towards the matter. You... You're just being kind. I saved your life. This is repayment. Of course I don't. You interject once more. Look, I'm not gonna pick it up again. Please, drop it. I'm sorry. I just... I'm kind of stressed out. Just so many feelings, so many people that... Things like rent, family... I just... I don't have time for it anymore. No one wants to listen to me break chords all night. <laughs> but enough about me. You need to rest. She places a blanket over you, and moves to turn the lights off. Then, 
as he slowly drifted asleep. He seen her turn around and leave. The following morning, the smell of fresh eggs, diced vegetables, and soup warmed the chill that was clinging to you. Hey, I'm glad you're up. Before you try to move, give me a second. She unties her apron and washes her hands before coming over to your bed and sitting down. She leans closer, almost like a kiss. I'm gonna check your head, okay? Don't move. Breathe for me. Breathe out. Good. Close your eyes. Move your fingers up and down your arm. Now move them to your cheeks in small circles. One, two, and one, two. Good. <laughs> I feel like doing something special today. I have my classmate's Crunchyroll password, so let's watch some anime. You give a small laugh and agree. For the rest of the day, you both enjoy a long list of anime, from Stains Gate, Parasite, to Love Tyrant, and by now, the room was tense with unspoken thoughts. You work up the courage to ask the girl more about herself. <laughs> well, outside of judo, I enjoyed cooking, drawing, reading, and music. As if she caught it, as she said, she stood up and began walking towards the kitchen. I know you're going to bring up the violin. I ask that you don't. You bite your lip and fight the impulse, but you lose. You ask just why she wants to avoid something she obviously enjoyed. Why do you care? You don't even know me. Why are you so hung up on that stupid instrument? And you stare into her eyes as they slowly glisten with water. You reflect on your year. You think hard on all the trying times and the heartbreaking moments on that brief second. Yet, without realizing it, you found a peaceful moment in the storms of life with music. That in the most challenging days, a kind, smooth tune always mellowed you out and made the day something to look forward to. Maybe it's just your head injury, but you recall on memories that could be yours or made up. And these memories, there are times when you tried your best to form meaningful relationships with other people. Other times, the memories were unpleasant ones. With words like bullying, loneliness, and hate coming to mind. You look at her and tell her that listening to her play violin was like having a conversation with her. A total stranger, despite not knowing her well. You felt good being an audience. Each string carried with enough emotion that you felt as if you heard all her problems. The girl next door looks at the calluses on her hand. You listened to my practice? You really did? Even when I played the same arrangement over and over again? Even though I felt like I haven't progressed after all these years? Before winter came, I auditioned for the fourth orchestra. I... I didn't get in. Then I lost my job because of how long I stayed up practicing for the audition. I can't even face my parents after all that. What would I have to show them? The violin was just a waste. You sit up ignoring all the eggs and quivering and you ask that she plays it one last time. Just for you. What? What? Don't phrase it like that. I took care of you because you would have died without it. Don't get cocky and... Think... This has just been because... I appreciate you listening to me. Her ears turn bright red as she blushes. But thank you, though, for your kind words. I mean, sometimes when you're so stressed out and tired, you don't really hear the nice things people are saying. So, I just wanted to let you know. And even though 
I talk like I've given up. I have not. And a part of that is you. Thank you for listening now. The snow is falling. And those wounds are so bad. Get some rest. And sweet dreams. <laughs>